Hey, I'm Luke and welcome to Down From The Attic, Modern Classics, where I look at newer board games that you might not have heard of that are well worth checking out. Today, we're looking at Pyramid of Penguin from Brain Games, and this game's got a pretty unique mechanic to it. Let's check this thing out. First off, box art, and I really like this. You get a real sense of atmosphere with it. This is a big improvement for me over Ice Cool. Brain Games definitely has a thing for penguin themed board games, don't they? Contents, well, lifting the lid off, you're presented with this large board that fits in the box. No, I mean, it fits in the box. Yes, this is a rare game where the box is part of the components. Another thing Brain Games is fond of, and I really like this too. It's a neat idea. Under the boards for the trays are the rest of the components. Six custom dice, five dinky little magnets, this awesome looking penguin figure, these cardboard tokens, and this small deck of cards. Presentation, well, it speaks for itself really. This game is a real eye catcher. Just the board standing vertically. The art is really lovely for this, and I'm happy too that the art on the tray boards match up to the board art. Look how this rope bridge connects on the graphics. I mean, that's real care there. Much like Ice Cool, this has a really cold and frosty feel to it. Scratches in the ice, snow and icicles throughout the tomb, and all the treasures look superb. It's very thematic. The pieces, although very, very tiny, are nicely printed. Each has a penguin face printed on, and the penguin figure, really, really nice piece. In the game, you'll assume the role of a plucky penguin, who after months of searching has found the fabled Pyramid of Penguin. But as they enter the pyramid, oh no! The door slams shut. To escape, they'll need to find five magic treasures and make it to the temple entrance. But chasing them is the Peng Queen herself, a mummified penguin who isn't too keen on the treasure hunters being there. Will the penguins escape, or will they fall foul to the mummy? Set up, and this is a game of literally two sides. One player will assume the role of the Peng Queen, and the other is the Explorers. All the Explorers are placed on the side of the board with the closed sarcophagus, with them starting at the steps, with a little Peng Queen token on the side of the board on that sarcophagus. The big Peng Queen figure is placed on the other side of the board, on top of where the little token is. The board itself is mirrored, so items, walls and corridors are lying on both sides. All the pieces are magnetic, so they'll stick to the board. And the two penguin pieces are made to stick together, so as you move one, the other moves. Fantastic design. The treasure cards are separated into their five different colours, shuffled, and one of each type are given to all the penguins. These will be the treasures they are hunting for. We are ready to play. A round of play works as follows. The explorers go first, and then the penguin. But... There are certain rules and parameters where the Penguin can interrupt the explorer's turn and make a move herself. Very devilish. First, one explorer gets to roll all five white dice. However, any dice that show the Penguin symbol are set to one side and are effectively out of play. A player can roll as many times as they like to get a number of spaces they want on a dice, but it risks more Penguin symbols being thrown and more dice being put out of play. This also affects other explorers because they'll have less dice to roll and play with, so you'll have to think where it's worthwhile rolling again. The player then announces how many spaces he's moving, vocally, so the penguin has a vague idea of just how far that penguin's moving. Then the dice are passed on to the next player. They then move their little magnetic play piece around the maze in whichever direction they wish. The explorers take turns rolling the dice and choosing their moves like this, aiming to get the treasures they need on their cards. If any explorer lands on a treasure they're hunting for by exact move, they can announce to the players that they got that card, and place it down for everyone to see. This also gives the penguin an exact location of that player however. Explorers too can opt to use the little arrow should they roll it. This allows them to travel along an entire length of a corridor, great for getting around the board quickly. Once explorers have had their turn, it's time for the penguin to rise from her tomb. Any dice set aside from the explorers with the penguin symbol on are counted as move one square. The penguin also rolls the black mummy die and this adds to their total move. As the penguin moves around on their side of the board, 
so does the little mummy magnet on the other side of the board and man it's tense seeing that thing move closer to you. The penguin has no idea where the explorers are, only by clues, by treasures they collect and announcing and guessing in which direction they've moved after that. For the penguin it's very much careful observation and a little bit of guesswork. For the explorers it's tense trying to dodge an ever moving threat and if the penguin lands on you she grabs you, and I really love how the magnets stack to signify getting caught. Superb bit of design. That explorer is sent back to the start of the tomb, loses a life, and begins searching for their treasure all over again. And if you lose all your lives, you're out of the game. As mentioned, the pen queen can interrupt the explorer turn. If the explorers wish to roll with dice after ones with pen queen symbols have been put to one side, the pen queen moves however many dice are being added back into the explorer's hands. Explorers will really need to weigh up the cost of doing this. Is it worthwhile to get more chance of getting a roll you need, or are you just allowing the pen queen to creep ever closer to you? And this affects the group of explorers too. It's that player's decision, but yeah, this is a cutthroat game. The game ends when either a treasure hunter gets all their treasures, or when the pen queen collects a certain number of life tokens. This varies on how many people are playing. A two player game of this has one player controlling the pen queen, and the other controlling two explorers collecting 10 treasures. This mode, I gotta admit, it's not as fun as a four or five player game. Working as a group against one foe, it's great fun and games are over quick enough to give everyone a turn of playing the pen queen. It's fantastic fun hunting down your friends in a blind maze. Final thoughts, I really like Pyramid of Pen Queen, though I can completely understand that it's not everybody's cup of tea. Positioning the game as well, um, so that everyone's not crowded around one side of the board and there's only one person playing the pen queen can be a bit of a hassle as well. Because you're around one side of the board as the explorers, you kind of bunch together around that side and it can feel a little bit claustrophobic, so you'll need to think about where you're going to position this game to play effectively. But other than that, the game's fantastic. Uh, it's really good fun stalking those corridors, really creeping up on your uh, explorers and your friends who are playing the explorers and sort of taking your time with it and letting this little magnet slide closer and closer and closer. It's great fun. Uh, the only complaint really I've got is those magnets are so small. They are tiny, They're like the size of a, a grain of rice or something like that and they are begging to get lost so you'll need to be really careful not to lose them but other than that this one's definitely worth checking out it's a fun game well as always i'm luke thanks again for watching and i'll talk to you again soon